I ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning and welcome to the April 24, 2018 County Commission meeting. I would remind you to silence your cell phones. Meeting documents are on the end of the counter in the white folder. And if you need a listening device, Craig is up here in the front and he could help you with that. Move on to routine business. Item number one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is approve the commission me meeting minutes from April 14, 2018. Commissioner Bender. April 17th. Excuse me, April 17, 2018. So and moved. I know uh, I had an amendment, but I yeah. can't remember what it is right now. <laughs> it's the spelling of a name. Oh, uh, yes, there was um, a name misspelled. <laughs> I, have an amend I have an amendment to add an R to a name in the minutes. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes with that amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is bills to be paid in the amount of $1,299.70. One dollars and eleven cents. Pay the Is bills. Second. And comments, Commissioner. Madam Chair, uh, we had some fairly large bills this uh, this week. Uh, we had uh, three hundred and seventy-two thousand to Armor Correctional Health. We had uh, three hundred and six thousand to JLG Architects on the jail. Then we had two hundred and eighty-one thousand for uh, Sioux Falls Library. Total on that is um, nine hundred and sixty thousand. So our actual other bills are 338,987. Which is actually kind of low for a week's bills. So Right. I have a motion and a second to pay the bills. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four are reports. There are none. Item number five is personnel actions. Item A is consider a motion to approve the routine personnel actions. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number six is abatements recommended for approval. There are A through E. Olivia? Yes, the first one is A. It's for the elderly assessment freeze, RDID 61844, for 2017 property taxes in the amount of $102.36. Is there a motion on the elderly freeze? Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. B through E are all the city of Sioux Falls, so I think we can take that as one motion. Mm -hmm. So the first one is RDID 14900, 2017 property taxes in the amount of $441.50. RDID 33189, 2017 property taxes in the amount of $1,405.85. RDID 33192, 2017 property taxes in the amount of $1,668.78. And RDID 38208, 2017 property taxes in the amount of $2,872.04. Is there a motion on those? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number seven is notice and request. Item A is the first reading unauthorized the auditor to publish notice of hearing for the proposed revision of the Minnehaha County Ground Ambulance Ordinances. Linda Young. Uh, Commissioners Linda Young, Emergency Management. Um, as you know, uh, the last several years, uh, the or about 18 months ago, actually, the commission hired uh, Fitch and Associates to review the rural ambulance system within the county. Uh, after that, <coughs> a report was uh, made by Fitch, and uh, several groups were formed to uh, take their report together and meld it into the county EMS system. So a uh, group with EMS governance, training, electronic patient care reporting, and medical board were formed. Uh, those groups over the last uh, year have been working to enhance the rural ambulance system. Part of that is to uh, take the Fitch report and the county ambulance ordinance as we have it today and rewrite them. Uh, so the EMS government group has a rewritten ambulance ordinance for your consideration. Uh, so the next step in the process is for the commission to authorize the auditor to publish notice of a public hearing on May 15th. Uh, so that the commission consider, can consider this and take input on the subject. So I'd be happy to any, answer any questions, but I do need the commission to authorize the uh, auditor to uh, publish notice for the second hearing. Are there any questions for Lynn at this point? 
Commissioner, Commissioner Bender, sorry. Yeah. Lynn, I'm just wondering if you could explain a little bit about the emergence, how the ordinance creates this Minnehaha County Emergency Medical Services Division and in the purpose of that. Okay, so uh, when Fitch and Associates came, one of the things that they looked at um, was kind of the overall structure of the county system. And right now we kind of, excuse me, we kind of, we have individual uh, EMS systems so Del Rapids, Humboldt, uh, Garrison, Jasper, uh, Paramedics Plus, and then MedStar, um, they envision to uh, improve quality assurance, uh, the quality assurance process to, in, to uh, have better patient protocols and similar patient protocols for treatment that you would create an EMS division that would be hired or, or excuse me, housed in the emergency management office, and then we would work more closely with all of those agencies that are out there, all the licensed services, to bring them uh, under one, to bring them more closely together to align things like protocols for patient treatment, to align things for uh, better quality assurance, and you see part of it is uh, that it also does tail into is having a county medical director. Right now we just have a quality assurance, so it would be a quality medical director. Um, so it's really bringing that, all of those things into one office and then uh, really doing a little more coordination so that in the future as we go, instead of having four or five smaller systems, um, it's one, one, biggest, one bigger system, excuse me, so that the patient that's out in Humboldt um, can be assured that he's gonna get the same quality of care as the one out in, in Garrettson, so to speak. So um, I'm not sure if that's exactly clear, but they envision an overarching county or it was their recommendation to have an overarching county presence and it, that it would be much stronger than we currently have today. But there's no new personnel. I mean, it's basically the same personnel, just organized a little differently. Yeah, I think organized a little differently. And I think one of the things that we don't know because we've had some uh, discussions on personnel is um, we sat in this group uh, here uh, a couple months ago and really talked is is this a full-time FT or an FTE position is this a half-time FTE does Lynn is a Lynn uh, and the emergency management staff reshuffle duties within the office um, I don't think we know yet um, and everything what exactly that's going to be what part of it is going to be done electronically um, through the patient care reporting system once we get that into place so I don't think we know exactly yet uh, but it is envisioning that it, um, you know, is housed in our office and that it will take a much greater role than what we currently do um, in the future. So that's something, uh, Commissioner, if I, if I could finish. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that, you know, we'll be looking through um, through the next couple months. I don't currently envision that you'll see a budget request for a, an additional FTE this year because we just don't know what's all going to be involved yet. Um, I think it's, it's going to be a... A uh, learning process as we go so okay thank you yep additional questions for Lynn okay I need um do you know what the date is do we know what the date is for this hearing okay May it's 15th. not on it wasn't on my agenda so I would look for uh, authorize the publication of notice of the of the hearing or uh, yeah of the hearing authorized publish of the, of the public hearing so move second Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Lynn. See you in May. Item number eight is planning and zoning notices. There are none. Item number nine is petition for compromise of lien. There are none. And next we have opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone who would like to speak about something that is not on our agenda today. We'll move on to the next. next. Oh, excuse me. Good well, morning. If you I just identify yourself with your name and your address, and then we will limit it to five minutes, please. Uh, well, it's, it is in regard to agenda item 17. Uh, oh, originally, I called in about public comment, and uh, I'm not sure who uh, gave me the direction on, on speaking at uh, public comment, but it is in regard to item 17, and I can't wait if that would be uh, preferred. I think we have to wait, don't we? I think we have to wait, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we need to wait yeah. until All item right, 17. Thank enough. you very Thank much. You. Okay, with that, we'll move on to regular business. Item number 10 is consider bid awards recommendation for roof replacement repair of the armory building located at the fairgrounds. The bids were opened um, April 11th. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Commission. Mark Krenz, Director of Facilities. Uh, on April 11th, we opened bids for the roof replacement on the armory building at the fairgrounds. Uh, the bid results came in as followed. Guarantee roofing and sheet metal of SD Incorporated, 
$154,984. Great Plains Roofing, $185,490. ARS, a Tech to American Roofing Company, LLC, $280,450. Dawson Incorporated DBA, MJ Dawson, $266,533. The bids have been, been reviewed and I'm requesting commission consideration of the bid award to guarantee roofing and sheet metal of SD for the armory building roof replacement at the fairgrounds. Are Qu there any questions? Questions for Mark? Move for approval. I have a motion and a second. second. All those in favor say uh, aye. Excuse me. What did we budget for this, Mark? 250000 250000 okay. Good, thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve the roof. All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed, same sign, motion passes unanimously. Uh, Madam Chair. Commissioner. Uh, Mark, could you just give us a real brief uh, explanation of what happened to the Expo building in the last snowstorm? You don't need to go into detail, but with the entrances to the facility and uh, the crushing of the roof? Sure. So um, on, on the entrances where the larger garage door openers are, there's some overhangs or... Um, basically peak roofs with steel on them and with this last snowstorm with the heavy snow that came off of the upper roof on the lower roof and then onto these roofs it collapsed two of them in so we're in the process of getting quotes to get those repaired so well, those will be covered under insurance <coughs> okay I, I'm assuming that's what I'm asking yeah yes, yeah I'm, I'm just starting with the quotes and then we'll we'll move forward from there so just so that everybody's aware of the fact when you go out there and you see that they're not normal entrances and exits, uh, you're aware of what happened. Yeah, so I, my plan is um, to move forward. We'll, we'll get um, proposals to put snow guards above those entrances so it'll help yeah. keep all that heavy snow from falling. Yeah. So. That and we had a lot of ice, so I'm sure it was snow and ice that yeah. came raining down. Yeah. There's some other roof repairs that will need to be done on the building too because there's some vent pipes that were tipped over and some roof membrane torn. So, okay. Thank you, Mark. Yep. With that, we'll go on to item number 11, which is a public hearing with Del Rapids. And so in order to do that, we are going to... Um, Public hearing is item number 11 for proposed ordinance amendment to Minneapolis County 28-17-8. I would ask for a motion to recess the Minneapolis County meeting, commission meeting to move into joint meeting with the city of Del Rapids. So move. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, Del Rapids, are you want to make a motion to be in session? Or how do we do it? We take a, oh, all those in favor say aye on the county side. Sorry, we have a motion yeah. and a all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same side. Motion passed unanimously. I apologize. We don't do this regularly. Um, and so on the city of si Sioux Falls, or Del Rapids, do you have a quorum? And did you want to call your meeting to order? Yes, Gary Hawk calls the meeting to order during the motion to call. Okay. All right. And do you need a second and a? Thank you for the names. Uh, so we have a motion and a second and uh, unanimous. We have a, um, a quorum on the Del Rapids side to call this meeting to order. And then we will go on to Kevin. You are going to do, did I miss something again? I need a roll call. <laughs> oh, I need a roll call from the city of Del Rapids of who's present. Can I email that to you? That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Kevin, now you can go. Oh, you need to vote. You did a motion and a second to be on the agenda. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Now we'll go on to Kevin. All right. <coughs> they have to adjourn. Okay. Okay. Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. Uh, so this uh, item is a zoning text amendment. Uh, to that is requested by the, the staff uh, t by the Joint Planning Commissions uh, to review the accessory buildings for the, the joint area around the City of Del Rapids and the county. Uh, the request was for accessory buildings because uh, accessory buildings is a currently a conditional use permit request if you're building over uh, 1,200 square feet. Uh, and it is the most common request uh, in the area. 
uh, I have a little slideshow showing the various requests, including uh, the request for the county at large and the joint jurisdiction of Sioux Falls. Uh, you'll see that in the last three years, 2015 to through 2017, there are five requests for a conditional use permit for larger accessory building in Del Rapids joint jurisdiction. Uh, and there was seven total requests for those three years. So the uh, vast majority of the re conditional use requests were the, for this. Um, and uh, part of the concern about uh, wanting this to happen is that the larger accessory buildings are getting larger. Um, and to we're c continuously approving them as a planning commission. Uh, so this graph here shows uh, the size of accessory buildings uh, for the jurisdictions and where you see kind of a, a bell curve of uh, larger accessory buildings right around that 24 to 3600 square feet. Um, so our proposed ordinance takes that into account uh, with the allowing larger buildings per the size of the uh, parcel. Uh, and as noted previously, uh, most of these are being approved um, with out of all the ex accessory building requests, uh, 100 of them have been approved. Uh, and then four of them have been approved with a slightly smaller number than what was requested size. And three have been denied or withdrawn. So most of these are being approved. Um, the new request or the new ordinance uh, would take use a table uh, for property size uh, to adjust from the property size to the allowable uh, accessory building footprint. For one acre or less, uh, the allowable accessory building footprint would go up to 1,600 square feet. For 1.1 acres to three acres, the allowable accessory building footprint would be 2,400 square feet. And for 3.1 acres or more, uh, the allowable accessory building footprint is 3,600 square feet. Um, and just as a note as well, uh, in the joint jurisdiction of Del Rapids, nearly all the properties that would require this conditional use permit are above three acres. So they would be, most of them would be that 3,600 square feet. So uh, is there uh, any, any the questions? action, the, pla uh, the planning commissions recommended approval for the uh, joint ordinance and the joint board of county commissioners and del rapids city council may vote to amend approve or deny the amendments of the proposed zoning ordinance uh, ordinance number mc 281718 is there any questions any questions for kevin commissioner karski i should know this but i'm going to ask what is the smallest um, permissible parcel size that we have in Minneapolis County. What's the smallest size that you can have for a parcel of land? A any new parcel has to be platted at one acre. So when we say the size of the parcel, one acre or less, we don't have any parcels that are less than an acre? Uh, there are, uh, because there are a lot of parcels that were platted prior to that one acre requirement, okay. um, and they could still be part of that one acre or less. Okay, what is an acre, 44,000 square feet or something? Uh, like that? Close to that, 43,000. 550. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Somewhere around there. Yep. Okay. I, I was just, you know, when I look at a 1,600 square foot building, isn't that big? It's about, what, about a five car, six car garage. But, you know, I didn't know how, how small the parcels we had out there that sure. you could cover a whole parcel basically with a building if you small enough. So, okay. Sure. Thank you. Additional questions for Kevin? This is a public hearing. So is there anyone who would like to speak in support of this bill? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition of this amendment? Okay, with that, I would look for a motion and a second. I make oh. a motion to approve this ordinance change. Second. A motion and a second on the county side. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same side. A motion and a second on the counties on the city side and to approve, deny, or amend. To Bill I need a second. I'll second that. Mike, you, Garretts. Mike Garretts is a second. And can their chairman ask for all those in favor? All in favor? He says all in favor. 
Aye. Okay. Motion passes unanimously on the Del Rapids side. Um, with that, I would look for a motion from um, to adjourn from the um, joint session from the Del Rapids side. If it be a motion and a second to adjourn. Move to adjourn, Bill Schmidt. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Passes unanimously. And on the city side, I would look for a motion and a second to reconvene into our joint or first to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion Opposed. to adjourn. And second. Aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. And now I need a motion to reconvene into the Minnehaha County Commission. Make a motion to reconvene. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. I think we got that all covered. Um, item number 12 is a brief presentation from the uh, County Board of Mental Illness Activities, Jim Osti. And Jim, I will tell you what I've told everybody. You get 10 minutes. And if it's at more than 10, we cut you off. <laughs> So Can't do it. We're Can't watching, do it. We're <laughs> watching the clock, Jim. We're going to wave the red flags. And he's pretty ruthless. So Failure from the beginning. <laughs> uh, my name is Jim Osti, and I've presented uh, through the, your office a two-page document headed Potential Creditors and Mental Illness Cases. I thought it might be helpful to all of you to have a refresher in what all kinds of bills the county Board of Mental Illness uh, incurs. Uh, first and foremost, we incur hospital and emergency room bills, and we incur those bills from all of our local facilities. Uh, MED is the McKinnon Emergency Department. Uh, AMH is the, uh, excuse me, HED is the Heart Hospital Emergency Department. SED is the Sanford Emergency Department. For the hospitals, we of course have Avera Medical Hospital, Sanford Health Hospital, Heart Hospital, and then our psychiatric facility, Avera Behavioral Health Center. I separated HSC because that's another hospital that we have to pay for services provided for us. Uh, those bills get large. The local bills, I think, are becoming larger than the HSC bill. Uh, and I think that trend will continue. I need a brighter light bulb. Or I need darker ink. There we go. Very good. inserted uh, ambulance services because we frequently incur those kinds of bills I will tell you that we try not to and we are uh, incredibly effective at doing that we basically teach our law enforcement officers to not place the hold on a person found in crisis until they've been transported by the ambulance to the emergency room by doing that, they're not on a hold at the time, and we don't have to pay the hospital, excuse me, the ambulance bill. All of this, of course, probably ought to be viewed against the backdrop of when people have insurance, their insurance takes care of it, whether that's public or private. But it looks like we are serving about 37% of our people who are uninsured at the present time, completely uninsured. Next, I listed the mobile crisis services that we obtain through a contract with Southeastern Behavioral Health. Uh, mobile crisis services are lay services, not law enforcement, not medical, but lay services designed to de-escalate uh, and divert mental illness patients from becoming holds. Uh, I have complimented you on supporting that program every single time I had the opportunity, and we are again dealing with about 500 cases submitted to mobile crisis services, and we are having about a 95% successful safe diversion rate. By that, I mean the person is allowed perhaps to stay home or wherever they're found safely, or they're allowed to stay at their place of work or at their place out in public at Walmart or the mall or uh, the county fair or some place like that. It includes people who are allowed to sign in voluntary at mental health facilities. Uh, 
such that the county would not then be liable for their services and charges. Uh, it might include a diversion to a detox center for a sobering center hold or a five-day detox detention. We have about a 75% success rate with people being allowed to stay home, which I refer to as optimal diversion. Uh, just a fabulous result. Now, could you speak more into the mic? That we're having problem pick, picking you up on the audio. Sorry. I'm Thank sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I messed you up. Seventy-five percent <laughs> success rate of leaving people at home is a really outstanding rate. You you hear some things from Miami Dade and Johnson County, Kansas, and in other places about nearly hundred percent diversion, and I I can't hardly imagine how they do that. Uh, next, I inserted a uh, category for other county transport. Occasion well, the, the fundamental rule of all mental illness law is that the county of the patient's residence is the ultimate payor responsible for paying charges. If they don't have insurance, the resident county has to pay. Uh, we've had many Haha -Ha County residents uh, go into crisis in Rapid City that have had to be transported from Rapid City to HSC, and those bills are large. I don't know if we'd ever get the opportunity to, re to reciprocate, but my memory will be good when the time comes. <laughs> uh, next, doctors and specialists. We have a line item in our budget and an ASN number for that. Uh, there are certain doctors or certain charges for medical proceedings headed by doctors, spearheaded by doctors, both at the time of the initial medical clearance and screening before the person goes to the psychiatric facility and also uh, more so in that vein before they go out. That category would include some of the special tests, blood tests and the like, CAT scans, EKGs and the like uh, that patients get. That would be something above and beyond the standard Medicare rate of $700 a day for all services associated with the hospital room the patient's going to enjoy. We always have to pay sheriff's service of process fees uh, that particularly applies to us paying Yankton when we send a patient to the Human Services Center and the Yankton Board of Mental Illness provides the hearing. Uh, the statute got changed about three years ago, changed it from $25 a pop to $50 a pop. Uh, that's made a significant difference. Uh, and there's no way around it. We have instituted on our part here locally an effort to keep track of those charges and send those charges back to the county of residence for out of county and out of state patients we are dealing with. Uh, the sheriff's service of process line item also includes having our sheriff uh, more than once a day gather the petitions and other mental illness case paperwork from all of the facilities in town where a doctor might place a person on a hold and fill out a petition. Uh, that paperwork needs to come to the board chair immediately because you have to evaluate that person by your QMHP and make a decision to hold or release the hold, continue the hold or release the hold within 24 hours. So time is of the essence. Next, I listed the Qualified Mental Health Professionals, QMHPs. The statutory scheme requires that a person placed on a mental illness hold by a doctor or by a police officer has to be evaluated within 24 hours to determine whether the hold ought to continue or be released. The board in Minnehaha County has six QMHPs under contract in its employ. Uh, they do very well. It's a pretty expensive process. When you look at those numbers, I imagine you don't like it, but it's worse in other counties, uh, I assure you. Yank Yankton's going rate, for instance, with the Lewis and Clark Behavioral Health Office is 
160 bucks, where ours is 90 at the most. Uh, when we send a person to the Human Services Center directly, their QMHP has to get involved and do the evaluation, so we have a line item in our budget for paying them. As I indicated, it's more expensive than ours, uh, at least initially. Uh, that expense gets worse for that patient that was out in Rapid City, uh, grotesquely worse. I next listed board chair duties. Of course, the board chair functions like a judge in a specialty court. Uh, I would review petition paperwork, determine that it is facially sufficient and shows probable cause to believe the person is uh, acutely in need of mental illness protection. Uh, I receive petitions from family members and friends and non-doctor people who want a hold put on someone. I review that and, if appropriate, issue a warrant for their detention. I receive the reports from the QMHPs within 24 hours as to whether or not the hold ought to continue or get released. Uh, that's a kind of a joint decision based on their expertise. And perhaps what the board chair supplies there is the uh, adherence to the legal principles of we got to have a clear and convincing case of dangerous mental illness uh, rather than any other possible reason for crisis. How am I doing on time? You are at 10 minutes, so I'm going to ask you to wrap up at the end of your page. <laughs> uh, if you would, please. I'm you sorry. might note that our lay board members get paid out of that board chair line item. Uh, we are not required. We've never paid the sheriff's department for taking all of the transports they do for us. That also means that our sheriff's department, I don't think, is charging other counties, which they could for when they transfer a patient residing in another county down to HSC or brings them back which the statute requires. We also, unlike other counties, do not compensate out of mental illness monies the state's attorney's office, who always represents the petitioners, or the public defender's or public advocate's office, who represent the patients in those hearings. When you have a hearing down in Yankton, you get to pay a board chair in the hearing, two lay board members in the hearing, the prosecutor and the defense lawyer, and the court reporter. Maybe if there's anything to the HSC crisis is that we are having more hearings here. We had 145 hearings in 2017. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. That was a great that was a great overview of kind of what's going on. And when we do get those bills, sometimes we have five or six pages of mental illness bills, and it's hard to know what because they all come down as ASN 400s and. And, and a whole lot of different numbers, $25, $50, $700, and, and it is nice to know kind of where all that stuff is going. Are there any questions for Jim before I? I just that? one quick one, if I may. You said you had 500 diversions, correct? We have 500 calls per Use diversion. the microphone. <laughs> Use your microphone, uh, Jim, just because they're on TV. taping it. We have at least a dozen <laughs> people watching. Yeah. We had a, a little more than 500 calls for mobile crisis services, and we diverted about 95% of those. And that was in 2017? Yes. Okay, thank you. We have had a like statistical success in all the other years that we've been in business. It's remained nicely stable. The, the success rate, but what about that number? Mobile crisis referrals come from law enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. It seems like the number of people brought into law enforcement contact is growing and growing in acuity or severity, so I'm not surprised that we've kind of hit a ceiling for how many cases are divertible. Uh, when you run into someone who's accomplished an overdose, mobile crisis is not called for. Uh, 
even though the statute was designed to allow emergency room doctors to call mobile crisis in for diversion goal, our emergency rooms and our hospitals won't allow that. Mm -hmm. We continue to discuss, but it's like talking to Mount Rushmore. And this has a big relation to the triage project that we're working on and the, and the Very much numbers. So. Yep. Yep. Very much so. Thank you. Additional questions for Jim? Commissioner Bender? I don't have a question. I just want to thank you and your team for all the work that you guys do. Thanks to Southeastern for the great, you know, a lot of times we get so bogged down in our problems that we forget the real successes that we've had. And yeah. so I appreciate you reminding us of that this morning. I'm sometimes accused of being the king of schmooze, and I wouldn't deny that completely. But my metaphor is that the chairman of the Board of Mental Illness might be a king, but I'm the king of nothing, nowhere, and no one, because I don't control any of the people I deal with all day, every day. I can't tell my even my QMHPs, who I have some direction for, I can't tell them what to think or what to recommend. And, and I can't tell them to go take a hike when I disagree with them. I'm, I'm stuck. Uh, Jim, with the growth of the Avera facility and the opportunity, I guess, for potential partnerships or whatever, is that going to change our process at all or how that may inf affect the way we operate? I'm really afraid that we are coming towards some big changes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my one of my lay board members showed me an ad that she'd clipped out of the newspaper the other day that offered a $3,200 signing bonus to join HSC as a nurse. And they, I think, have hired a new director, but I don't think they've gone public with that. Uh, they did make an announcement. Did they? Yes. Um, the well, see, they didn't tell the chair. The um, staff just said that HSC has made an announcement that they will have a uh, new director at HSC starting in April. End of May. End of May, excuse me, just for the audiences. Well, that would be good. Uh, the HSC used to have 300 beds in motion, and now they have somewhere over 100 in motion. And that crisis of not even having the doctors and the nurses and staff to care for beds puts it all back on us. Yep. Uh, Lincoln County, where behavioral health is located, has experienced about a 700% increase in cases coming from other counties in South Dakota. They're not very happy about that. We get cases from other counties, but not in that percentage or that volume. That, by the way, stresses the notion of a joint board between the two counties. Additional questions, Commissioner? Go ahead. I was going to say one last thing. I'd really like to talk to you some more sometime. <laughs> we, would, we would be glad to have you come. I think Commissioner Benega has a question. Uh, more of a comment. It, it seems to me that with the triage conversation, the growth of Avera's facilities and what's going on in HSC and Yankton, that it would behoove us to start conversations about how all those pieces will work together to make a system that's maybe not quite as expensive as what we've faced in the past, but I don't think that that's gonna happen with the number of people we're serving, but it is a significant discussion that needs to be had. Uh, the, the Mental Illness Board and its chores deal with crisis, and the only thing they do is extinguish the flames. They don't really get involved in future good health planning, medication, treatment, counseling. That's where we ought to concentrate if we had a lot of money. Well, yeah. as in law enforcement and public safety and everything else that we're dealing with, uh, there's got to be better ways of rehab and prevention. Yeah. Has to be. Just has to be. It behooves all of us. It behooves the city government. Mm -hmm. To chime in on this. Yep. Well, this is a conversation to be continued. <laughs> so thank you, Jim, for your time. Thank you. thank you. Go on to item number 13, which is consider a motion to authorize the Sheriff's Office to apply for the fiscal year 2019 Highway Safety Program grant through the South Dakota Department of Public Safety. Joe, good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Joe Bosman with the Sheriff's Office. 
I have before you this morning a request to apply for our annual highway safety grant. Um, this is a grant that allows um, us to put forth our uh, extra efforts with the sheriff's office <coughs> by using funds received from the state for overtime purposes, whether that be uh, uh, sobriety checkpoints, saturation patrols, looking for not only uh, impaired drivers, but we also focus on speed and seatbelt enforcement as well. Uh, with this uh, grant, then um, we would be allowed to receive uh, whatever the federal government through the calculations is going to give us for funds and we would apply that towards overtime purposes not only for the patrol but also we can use this for the jail as well too because when the city of Sioux Falls has a, you know 10 extra officers out doing an overtime saturation that impacts us in our, our county side as well so we can implement uh, some overtime for the jail staff as well too questions for Joel I'd make, make a motion. motion to authorize the sheriff's department to submit an application for these grant funds we have a motion second. and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Thank you. Joe. Um, number 14 is consider a resolution to support adoption of the Minnehaha County, excuse me, Lincoln County, Minnehaha County Pre-Disaster Hazard Mitigation Plan. Lindy Young. Commissioners, Lindy Young. Um, we've been working on this for uh, since January of 2017. And as you remember, uh, every, every five years I'm required to uh, update the county multi-hazard mitigation plan. Uh, in the last uh, three go-arounds, we've worked with Lincoln County and the City of Sioux Falls um, in a joint planning group uh, for this project. Uh, CCOG was hired as a lead planning group. They put everything together based on federal guidance. That's the one thing I want to uh, just emphasize is the plan, which you see here, 170 pages, is based on federal guidance. We don't have a whole lot of opportunity to do a, a lot of different things within it, so um, so we have to base it on federal guidance. And what it allows us for is once we need, once we complete it, <clears throat> to apply for mitigation uh, funds for mitigation projects that we might have out there to uh, lessen the impacts of disasters that the county may uh, have or may experience. So um, the plan, and I didn't uh, attach it because like I said, it's 170 pages, but in your memo is the link for it. It's on the CCOG. Uh, website and after or after adoption we'll, we'll put it on ours and then a list of the projects that have been previously funded in Minneapolis County is also included within the memo so I'd be happy to answer any questions or walk by page by page if you have the time for that <laughs> I don't think that's probably a good idea but uh, be happy to answer any questions on the planning process um, once again all the communities in Minnehaha County and Lincoln County will be uh, asked to um, to bring the resolution forward to their governing body and adopt the resolution. And then all of that comes in and then it once again sent, gets sent back to FEMA uh, for final adoption and final approval. So uh, that being said, I, there isn't a resolution attached and I'd ask the commission um, to vote and accept the plan uh, as part of the planning process. So be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Lynn? We have a motion to approve the resolution. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Lynn. Yep. And I, I would think just you'd say. You wouldn't have fit in our 10 minutes with that. Yeah, I wouldn't have. And I would just say, you know, I really have a great job and everything, but this is one of the things that kind of slows it down a little bit. But it's a very important process. It's just not the most exciting for me in my office. So. Uh, Madam Thank Chair, you. while we've got Lynn up here, uh, yesterday, uh, or maybe it was the day before, your uh, dive team helped recover a vehicle from a lake, right? Yep. So, uh, if I can? Yes. Uh, yeah, the dive team worked is working with, uh, as you know, the volunteers work with uh, different counties around. We worked with Lake, or excuse me, uh, McCook County yesterday and their efforts. And it's uh, been in the lake for a long, long time, and it's part of a law enforcement case out there. So. And nobody was in it, as yep. far as we can tell. Well, good. Except for a bunch no of fish. But anyways, yeah, so out and about working hard. Um, and like I said, I know a couple weeks ago we had the volunteer resolution, but they're working every day. Um, on behalf of the county, so thank you. Okay, thanks, Lynn. Item number 15 is authorize the chairman to sign a lease agreement between Minnehaha County and the Girl Scouts of South Dakota, or of South, uh, excuse me, Girl Scouts of Dakota Horizons for use of portion of the Wall Lake State Park. Or not State Park, Wall, Wall Lake Park. That's correct, thank mm -hmm. you. Scott Anderson, County Planning Director. Um, uh, it, before you is the contract, as you mentioned. Uh, it is a long-standing use agreement that we have with the Girl Scouts for using portion of Wall Lake uh, that they have for 20-plus years. Uh, 
the lease has been reviewed by the state's attorney's office. We've worked with the Girl Scouts and had them review them, the, the, the agreement. Everyone is satisfied with it, and so I would uh, ask that you consider it. I'll go through, um, just to give you an idea here of the location, um, if I can scroll that down a little bit. So <clears throat> there, the Wall, Wall Lake Park is approximately 23 plus acres. Uh, the Girl Scouts have their facility in sort of the back northwest one third of that uh, facility. You, you can see there's a shelter, sort of a natural shelter belt that goes around. Uh, that sort of is the, is the general um, boundary and then the lake and then the north property line and uh, it works out really well. They use the facility off and on throughout the summer and they also are now partnering with um, the YMCA. So we have, it, we, we've expanded the opportunities for recreation out there and it seems to be working quite well and we haven't had any problems. So I would ask for your approval of the lease agreement and I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for Scott on this lease? Madam Chair, I'd make a motion to approve this agreement. There is a representative of the Girl Scouts here. Yes. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Did you want to say anything? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Come up, identify yourself and. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Dale Norton. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for the Girl Scouts Dakota Horizons. And I um, appreciate just having a minute here to, to say how appreciative we are of having access to the property. Uh, we've used it for many years and served many girls. Um, you know, our mission is to uh, build girls of uh, courage, confidence, and character who make the, the world a better place. And um, our camp properties are a very important piece of, of you know, serving that mission. And uh, we do have a great relationship with the, with the Y. And uh, so between you know, their programs as well as ours, um, you know, the, the property is used um, you know, as, as much as, as possible, and we just we thank you and, and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for coming by, and it is great that we've been able to, to join forces with the Y and have more people utilize this space, because it is very nice. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number 16 is consider a bid award recommendation for MC 17-12-260th Street, bridge repair and structure number 50-248-160. Bids were opened on April 18th. Good morning, Shannon. Good morning. Shannon Schultz, Assistant Highway Superintendent. DJ is not able to be here. He's at the National Conference for Association of County Engineers in Wisconsin. So yes, on April 18th, four bids were received for project number MC17-12, which is a bridge repair project on 260th Street, which is located just east of Corson on a township road. The nature of the bridge repairs <clears throat> it's not in your memo, but uh, it's uh, cleaning up some, lubricating some bearings, getting rid of a finger joint, which is the cause of some of the bearing issues, and also um, doing some guardrail extension, as well as providing um, some painting on some of the steel. It's, it's a large structure. So the bid summary is shown in your uh, handout. The bid summary, uh, Journey Group Companies doing business as Sioux Falls Construction Civil Constructors was low bid at 222000 $84.34. The high bid was by Dunnick Inc. at $426,942.00 and in between there was Pram and BX Civil. The engineer's estimate by Short Elliott Hendrickson is $236,909.60. So we reviewed the bids and recommend award to Journey Group. However, there was uh, an irregularity with the bid. Um, the low bidder, Journey Group, did not acknowledge it addendum one which traditionally calls for rejection uh, as a non-responsive bidder. Uh, the nature of addendum one, however, allows a substitute product other than what was originally called out in the specifications <laughs> for the guardrail extension off the bridge rail. So we review this with the state's attorney's office and is their opinion and professional recommendation that the failure to acknowledge the addendum did not give the low bidder a substantial advantage or benefit over the other bidders and therefore is not considered to be a material variance, but rather a technical irregularity. So therefore we are rec requesting approval uh, with your approval to recognize and waive the technical irregularity previously mentioned. Any questions? I have a 
Any questions for Shannon? And I do have a specific motion when you're ready to make a motion. I have a specific uh, concern here. Commissioner. When, when I look at my map, I, I think there may be a transposition on numbers on this uh, bridge number because I show it to be 50-284-160. You are correct, Mr. Barth. Okay. That is 284. You're right. Thank you for noticing that. Well, let's fix the right bridge here, okay? Yep, that's right. 260th Street is correct. <laughs> So it's 50 284 160. And that is my, is the my fault, and I apologize. Um, it transposed a couple numbers there. So the motion would be a motion to approve low bid, including waiver of the technical irregularities irregu in the bid of SFC Civil for failure to acknowledge the addendum as it does not affect the price, quality, or quantity of the service. Madam Chair, we want to also have an adjustment to the contract. And so we'll fix that transposed number in the contract. Okay. We will all, should we make that two different motions? That include that as a motion. Okay. Yeah. With um, a uh, recognition that this is bridge number 50 284 160. That is my motion, or that would be the motion. Do you want me to read it again? I'll make it my motion, whatever you said. <laughs> I'll second it. Mm -hmm. I'll give that to Olivia. I have a motion and a second. I'm not going to read it back. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Commissioners. Item number 17 is authorize the chairman to sign the contractual agreements for attorneys representing the drug and alcohol petitioners. Carol Muller, good morning, Carol. Good morning, Commissioners. Carol Muller, Commission Office. Before you, or actually, I'm going to go back a couple months ago, back in February, when you authorized an RFP to be published looking for um, contractual conflict attorneys and also attorneys for um, to represent the petitioners and IVCs. That RFP went out and um, we're starting to see those contracts start to come in today. Today we have before you three contracts for IVCs. I will share with you that the abuse and neglect and juvenile contracts will come next Tuesday in front of you and at this point we've decided to take some smaller steps and we're going to hold off for a few months for the uh, criminal and then also the habeas cases at this at this point. So before you today is the first set, which are for uh, representing the petitioners on the IVC. You're most familiar with the petitioners because they often come in and ask for a compromise of the lien when a parent or an aunt or somebody else comes in and, and has placed that petition on there. So before you today are three contracts uh, to perform this work. And uh, these are professional services. We did not have to do an RFP, but we really wanted to make sure that we were making the Second Circuit attorneys aware of this. The uh, three attorneys who will handle the IVCs are Robin Ike, Nicole Grease, and Jennifer English. And these contracts are for $16,000 each and will extend for two years. Are there any questions for Carol? We do have a citizen here that would like to speak about this. Um, item number. So if you would just identify yourself and your address, please. Thank you. My name is Tom Weirheim. I'm an attorney here in town. Uh, I'm business address is 300 North Dakota Avenue, Suite 405. Uh, I I wanted to give the commission a little bit of background on what all goes into an IVC and the numbers we have seen. Um, I've done more IVCs over the past nine years than any other attorney, um, about 600 of them over, the, over that period of time. The average number over the past three years, we have about 263 of them. Uh, we had a little dip in 2016, but 2017 we're back up to 277. Right now there are 10 attorneys handling these cases. Uh, and, the, and that go, they're appointed by the clerk's office. After the, the, uh, the current proposal in front of you, there would be three attorneys handling almost uh, 87 cases per year. Again, the stipend is $16,000 annually. Typically in an IVC, um, an attorney puts in about five billable hours. Uh, what happens when a case gets started, what goes into those five hours is, first of all, if the petitioner goes before the clerk's office and the clerk uh, appoints an attorney. They make a phone call to any of these 10 attorneys. So I see a possible problem with there only being three because these need immediate action. A lot of times 
when, when I take a case, the first thing I always ask the petitioner is, where is this individual right now? Are they in a hospital? Are they in detox? Are they in jail? Are they at home passed out on the couch? Because if they're in custody, we need to keep them there, uh, keep them safe. And if they're released, then we have to send the sheriff's office after them, apprehend them. You know, we're uh, using up resources as far as, uh, one, sending the officers out there. In the meantime, they could get arrested. We could have overdoses out there. So th th all those things are, 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 are things that need, need to be taken into account, and these, these, uh, these cases need action right away. So from that point, once we get the person in custody or remaining in custody, we have five days to file what's called a petition uh, for an involuntary committal. Within those five days, we have, uh, and, and that says this is why this individual has a problem and is a habitual chemical or, or, chemical or alcohol abuser, is a danger to themselves or a danger to others, or is pregnant and, and abusing uh, drugs or alcohol. What I always tell my clients is this is not meant for the person who is sitting in their basement drinking. Again, that will eventually probably cause problems, we all know that, but if they are not making statements on their own life, making statements on somebody else's life or threatening them, uh, having hospital admissions or driving under the influence, they don't meet the standards of the statute and so we'll dismiss the case. Uh, but there's still a little bit of time involved there because you have to meet with the individual or with the petitioner and, uh, and file some paperwork to get the case dismissed, usually about an hour's worth of time. So from there, uh, the individual, the, the respondent has the option to stipulate to treatment on day five after a, an assessment has been done and they can agree to the terms of, of, the, uh, of the recommendation of the counselor, whether it be an inpatient recommendation, outpatient recommendation, or halfway house. Um, if they do not agree, we have to have a hearing within 10 business days of that fifth day. So w that, that can cause these cases to take a little bit more time if, uh, if there's a hearing um, or if there's a motion to revoke in the future where someone's in violation, we take them back into custody um, and have another evaluation done, updated an evaluation. But on average, even if there's a dismissal, it's about five hours. And so if you look at the math, uh, this is about well, $182.50 per case. And at five billable hours, that's thirty-six fifty a billable hour for these attorneys. That doesn't include clerical work, taxes, or overhead. And so I, I expect this to probably come before you again, um, just because it's 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 such a minimal amount. And I worry about the quality and the importance that that attorneys may put on these cases, taking them going forward, just because if they can charge one hundred and fifty dollars for most cases, and they're getting thirty-six fifty for these others. Uh, whether or not they are going to be given the priority. Um, and, and so I, I, I have a lot of concerns about these cases going forward. Uh, and so I just wanted to bring that to the commission's attention. Um, and I will open it up for any questions that you might have as far as the procedure or what, uh, what I've just talked about. Thank you, Mr. Weirharm, for your con um, your comments and I will give them an opportunity to ask questions but we did have a, a contract submitted and we did have three individuals apply for it and I think that we will be you know reevaluating in the future if we don't feel like it's working correctly for us this is our starting point and we do have people that are have a, have um, responded to us are there any questions for mr. Madam chair Commissioner, Commissioner Bard. so Tom thank you for c coming forward um, we need uh, people to help us on these things um, if uh, it was not necessary to apply a lien on a family member who, uh, you know, submitted their family member for treatment or whatever. Would that cut down on the amount of time necessary? In other words, if you didn't have to do a billable thing towards the uh, complainant. Uh, Are you saying keeping track of your time? Or, uh, because I, the voucher is, is, is a minimal part of the entire okay. process. Yeah, um, I mean, it takes five minutes to fill out a voucher and submit it to the auditor's office. There's, there's hardly anything to that. Um, I guess my view has been that uh, family members uh, need to be treated with sympathy on, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, my friends and foes who might turn me in. Yeah. Additional questions? Thank you. Appreciate you taking yeah, well your time. I, I, I do I have one, one further thing uh, just to mention. You know, I, I think this is something that should, <laughs> I, I, I worry about what's going to happen. Um, in the time until this may be reconsidered. I don't really see it as an option for a pilot program just because of the people that are at stake here. Um, you know, there's about 20, 25 of these a month, and I, and I, I have some concerns about 
the the caseload and the number of uh, of people that may come through. So thank you. Thank you very much for coming and uh, giving us some insight. I need a motion on this to authorize the contract uh, chairman to sign the contractual agreement with the attorneys that have applied. I'll make a motion, then I have a comment. Okay, I have a motion. Second. Is there a second? Commissioner Bender. Um, I just want to say that I think that there, there's been a lot of time spent on this. This isn't something we did from off the fly. Um, there's a group of um, judges and representatives from um, the court and the county and um, our attorney's offices. And so, um, you know, our, our Legal fees have been increasing dramatically. We're looking at opportunities for how we can manage those and still provide um, the services that are needed. And I think, you know, here that we had three qualified attorneys that um, applied for this, understanding the terms. Um, and, um, you know, so I, as with anything that you tried new, I think that there'll be opportunities to refine this process, but I think it's a great place to start and um, I'm, I'm confident that it's it's going to um, provide services needed um, but at a cost that is more affordable for the county so I have a motion in a second any other comments I have a question I guess for the state's attorney so if this uh, program turns out to have uh, flaws uh, we do we have an escape so to speak uh, and if there is a surplus of, of say commitment requests uh, at that moment notice where if we have three attorneys working on it and there are six people today that have to be addressed uh, can we still go outside of the contract to, so can on the one hand can we end the contract if it doesn't work and on the other hand if there's more work than three three individuals can schedule time for can we still go back to the old system well, uh, Commissioner, uh, obviously I don't give legal advice from the floor, but um, you know the as far as the um, the terms of the contract are before you, and uh, you know the as Commissioner ben, uh, Bender has outlined, uh, this went through a process of um, trying to uh, reduce costs but maintain quality, and so in the event that um, after the two-year contracts are completed, I'm certain that there'll be some feedback um, that this commission can review and consider. Um, and as far as whether or not there's, you know, there's always the opportunity um, in the event that uh, uh, for some yeah, absurd reason, the three uh, contractees are not available or have a conflict themselves, you know, that an outside attorney, you know, could be appointed. Um, so I, I think the, the, the contract and the court always has that option. Those circumstances can exist. I think they'd be pretty remote um, because of the fact that you'd have to have a conflict for both of the public defender and public advocates offices and then have a conflict all the way down on the three attorneys um, mm -hmm. in order to have an outside counsel appointed. So I think that's pretty remote, if not you know, potentially impossible. But I, I think that potential exists. So. Madam Chair, so other than that, though, we're locked in for two years at, at this point? Commissioner Barth. And Commissioner Barth, if you just read item number 14 and item number 15 in the contract, the termination and the annual reviews and amendments are in the contract. So I do have a motion, Commissioner. I was just um, doing some math here, and when I look at, you know, when we talk about current attorneys or it was presented that there's 10 attorneys doing IVCs, if if we look at 87 cases a year at five hours per case, that's only 435 hours. Average year at 40 hours a week is over 2,000 hours. So that's only one fifth of a year, basically, at 400 hours. So this is still very part time work for the 10 attorneys that are, are handling these. We're just looking at spreading it over three, and um, I think we're getting a, a very fair. Um, representation and we put it out for bids and that's what people are willing to do the work for I think it's I think it's in our best interest and the taxpayers of Minneapolis County's best interest so I have a motion in the Commissioner Bender ben I, again. I see a couple more attorneys in the audience I don't know if they have any comments that they want to make or if they're here for that purpose or not um, I'm not here for any comments Thank you. 
I have a motion and a second to approve the contract. All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number 18 is consider a motion to submit a request for the uh, amendment to the Community Development Block Grant Agreement 1112-302 to extend the grant period to June 30th, 2018. Carol Muller. Good morning, Commissioners. Carol Muller, Commission Office. Um, You've had this extended in front of you before, so I know that it's a little f familiar to you. In 2012, Minnehaha County requested and is, was awarded grant funds by the Governor's Office of Economic Development through the Community Development Block Grant Program. And those funds were used to purchase a truck for Southeast Technical Institute's commercial driver's license CDL training program and to award scholarships to eligible students to complete the training. Over the course of the grant period, there were a couple amendments that have been extending that grant period, and the last amendment was submitted March 2017, requesting an extension through April 2018. And at this point, there is $7,470.02 that is left in that account. Southeast Tech has another session beginning April 30th that will probably expend all of those dollars. But because the amended grant ends April 30th and the graduation completion will not happen before April 30th, they are requesting one more extension through June 30th, 2018. And before you today is the action to request the, or to uh, allow the chairperson to serve, to sign this extension. Any questions for Carol? Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number eight, 19, 19 is liaison reports. Jeff, I believe you had a report. Yep. I, um, some of us were here last night till 10 o'clock. Uh, Scott Anderson is here from our planning and zoning. We had three CAFOs, which uh, were one was fairly contentious. I would say uh, we had an elected representative from Rock County, uh, uh, Minnesota who felt that we should go by Minnesota rules on anything that close to the border and uh, uh, Scott pointed out that we also border on Iowa and there's a spot where we border on Iowa and Minnesota um, the uh, it was approved uh, there was certainly um, pretty extensive discussion and uh, uh, you know there's concerns about uh, foreign workers and the wave of crime that will hit the region, um, uh, of course, uh, pollution, et cetera. Uh, but unusually, we had a cell tower that raised a lot of uh, ire, uh, cell tower <coughs> between Tri-Valley and Lyons on a hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the cows will give less milk and, uh, and uh, disease will uh, afflict the neighborhood. It was approved. Um, I, I didn't expect such a long discussion on that one. Um, Paul Cosboth is uh, probably going to be leaving the Planning Commission, so we'll have a, a vacancy there. Um, and I guess uh, one other item is that uh, uh, the treasurer came uh, up and showed us a copy of a check she had received for $95,000 from the state of South Dakota as a rebate on some accounting errors the state had had. She was happy. Mm -hmm. I was happy. Carol and Craig were smiling. It was, it was good. Any additional liaison reports? I think so. Is there any new business? I would note that we have a distinguished member of our state legislature who just walked in and joined our group, and so thank you for coming, Larry. Is there any old business? Larry. You know, uh, can't we have Larry come up for a moment? We could have Larry, did you want to say anything? I will give him the opportunity. If you, it's up to you. Jeff wasn't suggesting that you should come up under old business for any particular reason. <laughs> <laughs> you can be new if you want. <laughs> thank you for that clarification. <clears throat> well, thank you, Commissioners. I didn't expect to say anything. I'm just, uh, I think it's my duty to come in once in a great while or whatever to, to see my county commission and see what you're doing and see what you might need um, from us at the legislature. Uh, this isn't a political call, by the way. So it's really I, nice to see you. I do want to um, make s to say th a special thank you uh, to the county and, of course, the city for our new veterans. Hopefully, our new veterans cemetery that's going to come in. I just met with a with uh, General Milky this morning on a couple of things, and 
and uh, <clears throat> that's going to be a great thing mm -hmm. for our veterans, for the families of our veterans, for the state of South Dakota, and of course for this area, the the Sioux Falls area, etc. It's going to be it's going to be a great thing. So uh, everything is has been submitted. I don't know if you've been. I think you've been brought up to date on on everything at your recent meeting, but. Um, it's been submit, submit the submission has been gone in, it has gone in so uh, for the for the project to the feds and we have approved the legislature has approved the 450,000 to operate for this year yet and then 150,000 for next year so uh, we've approved the 600,000 that was needed the 10 percent that was needed from the six million dollars that <coughs> is supposed to come in so that's going to be a great project and we're very very proud of it that I happen to sponsor it from the house side was very proud to sponsor it from the house side um, since I am a veteran and uh, also because I think it's a good thing for our veterans and their families very very good uh, so it's gonna not only have our veterans and families be closer but it's also going to save those families uh, dollars uh, to be able to use that cemetery so we're looking forward to that um, I also try to at, at the legislature try to hopefully most of the time listen to uh, my county and my city and my chamber and etc so uh, but there's there's gonna it's a that project is gonna be a big project about a six million dollar project which is gonna be good for for everybody so that's not what I came in for but I do appreciate you being able to let me get up and talk a little bit but uh, uh, if you have questions um, don't be afraid to email me uh, text me uh, call me uh, whatever so you know uh, Ron Milk you come because they've they're interested in doing the project he gave me a call and we met this morning etc so anything that I can try to do to help that's what I'm there for so Thank Larry, you. Larry, thank you for your service to our, just a minute, to, to our country and also to our state. But I need to have you introduce yourself for our listening audience. I didn't have <laughs> you do that. So My name is Anderson. Representative uh, Larry Zickman. I'm a representative from uh, District 14, which is the southeast part of the city. And uh, I, have one of, I have to be very careful. I've got one of my constituents here, so <laughs> right in front of me. So but I have to be very careful but anyway that's um, it, it's good to be here so and you'll see me a little bit more often so good. thank, thank you. you Madam nice Chair I, I would just comment that uh, Larry was certainly uh, <coughs> respectful to my personal concern in uh, raising the taxes on alcohol and uh, I uh, used to live in his district but uh, moved away um, <laughs> And uh, he moved to my finally, district. I would say also that I think he still gets snail mail, too, if you want to send him a letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming. You betcha. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't think we had any old business. So with that, I would look for a motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say sign. Motion passes. We are adjourned. Oh. Whoa. We need to go into exact. Oh. I'm sorry. Do we have adjourned? Yes, we okay. do. Oh, can we have a motion to rescind that? <laughs> Um, I don't know how that works. Reconvene. Okay, I'll make a motion to reconvene into exec session and, excuse me, but we also have Board of Equalization and I think we should do the Board of Equalization first. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So I would ask for a motion to reconvene into equalization to address one issue and then we will, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign, motion passes unanimously. We will move into exec